Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mark and I thank you so much for coming by today. Now before we get into the discussion, I did want to tell you a little bit about some changes to my channel and my routine and why I haven't been presenting much content in the past couple of months. Well, as some of you may know from previous videos, I've been teaching honors art at a local high school, filling in for a friend of mine who was out on medical leave. Well, he's come back and he's doing great, and I am back in the cubicle world at my corporate design gig, and uh, it's been a big adjustment for me, going from the 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. schedule to the 9 to 5 job that I have now, which is really kind of a 7 to 6 job. So it's taking a lot of time and a lot of readjustment getting back in the commute and getting back in the corporate mindset. Well, that doesn't leave a lot of time to make YouTube videos, and it doesn't leave a lot of time to do my own artwork. So I'm trying to get back to that now, and uh, for today's discussion, I want to get right into this, but I do apologize for the lapse in videos and the release of content. Of course, as any artist knows, when work comes, you have to work. I have to provide for myself and my family. So when the job is there, I have to do that first. YouTube and my own hobbies come second. And YouTube is a hobby for me. It's not a job, it's a hobby. And so my, my professional life comes first. So I hope you understand that. But uh, like I said, let's get right into this discussion. This is a discussion about color and choosing the right color palette for your image and pre-planning your color palette before you begin starting your picture. Now, one of the things I want to talk about is this book right here, which is upside down. <laughs> so it's this book right here. It's called A Book of Colors. And this book has been with me at my desk by my side since 1987. And I will explain why this is really important to me and why it should be important to you too right after this coffee break. So why is this book so valuable to me and why is it such a great resource for my artwork, my design work, and even just when I'm just playing around? I'll explain. I bought this book in about 1987. It was first published in 1984 and then republished uh, an updated version in 1987, and that's when I bought it. When I bought it, I didn't really know what I was getting. It's a book compiled by Shigenobu Kobayashi, and this author also has a book called The Colorist, which is, I believe, a modern version of this book, which I have not actually seen myself. I haven't read it, so I can't fully recommend it, but I believe this book is out of print, and The Colorist, I think you can still get on Amazon. So you might want to check that out. Again, it's called The Colorist, and it's by Shigenobu uh, Kobayashi. I hope I pronounced that right. But uh, why is this book so valuable to me? Well, when I'm starting any kind of an image or even a graphic design project, it's nice to know what colors are going to go into that project before I start. And planning out anything before you begin any project whether it's uh, any creative project, whether it's a painting, a drawing, uh, whether you're doing knitting or whatever, you want to pull out your colored yarn or whatever, it's nice to know the color palette that you're going to be working in. And uh, pre-planning that can save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches, especially when you kind of paint yourself into a corner, maybe using too many yellows or too many reds, and you look at your picture and you say, oh boy, I, I don't know what else to use at this point. And a lot of times you find yourself just using every color in the, in the palette just because you don't know what to use. This allows you to kind of pull out those colors and use them as you plan. So this tells you how to use this book, which is really nice. But uh, what I really want to get into is this first page here. And you can see it has the word fresh. And these are basically the color options, not all the color options, but some basic color options that you can use that are defined by the word fresh. They evoke a fresh feeling. And down here in the description, the author writes, Blue is the color of summer skies and cool mountain streams. Use color combinations on this page to brighten your home and give your wardrobe a cool and refreshing look. So if you're trying to draw a picture or paint a painting or create some kind of a garment or anything and you want to have a fresh look, these are some great color options to choose from. And you can set your color palette up based on these options. Now, if I add white to these color mixes, it just lightens the tones and gives it a more pastel, softer feeling. And that's what's so great about this book in particular is that it gives you a visual reference that you might not have otherwise. Now, back in 1987, when I bought this book, we didn't have the internet, so you couldn't just look up online you know, a decent reference like you can today. But even today, when I'm out in the field or I'm just out and about maybe doing some plein air painting or just having some fun in a coffee shop, this book, if it's in my bag, I can turn to it as a reference. 
I don't need the internet or if I can't access the internet, this again is a great reference. Now I'm going to go through this book fairly quickly and show you just the emotional palettes that they've set up here. So this is a youthful palette and you can see the bright cheerful colors with that description down below telling you exactly all the information you need to know and giving you some great options to use if you're looking for a youthful feel for your picture. And again, more color options. And one thing I love is how it breaks down the proportions. So you can have a large proportion of this color, a smaller proportion of this color, and then add accents of these two colors to make things really pop in your picture. So if you have a background, you could do this color. Maybe your character is based on this color and then accents really make the, uh, the whole image pop a lot clearer. So here we have some cool colors and I'll go through this. You have urbane colors, which are just really strong, bold colors. So if I'm doing a graphic design or a logo and the, uh, the, the client is, wants something that's really bold and strong, I can look at this and say, hey, maybe these are some good options for me. Uh, these are resolute, which are a little muted and darker. And then we get into mature and earthy tones. So these are your mature tones. And if I skip ahead to earthy tones, you can see these are great options. If you're doing a project that requires earthy tones, you can just look at this as a reference and say, yeah, these are the colors that I want to use. I like that, that palette setup right there, or maybe this one here or even down here. And as I go through this again, there's so many more options to look at and you can set up your whole palette before you even begin painting your, your painting. You want to get to uh, tender, <laughs> which is basically pastel -y, softer colors. And there's another one called dreamy, which I really like alluring. Uh, let me see. Dreamy is should be right here. Yeah, here's dreamy. You can see very soft pastel -y colors. And even though we may intuitively know these color palettes, it's nice to see them just displayed in a proportion setting, especially right here, where you can see different breakdowns and color palette options and use them in an applicable way, in a way that's functional and say, okay, I want to have a palette that's based on these colors. You can actually mix these colors or if you have convenience colors, you can just bring them to life in your painting just based on a plan that you set up ahead of time. And that's why this book is so important for me. I can't stress enough the ability to choose your palette before you start the painting or even again, making a garment, weaving a blanket, anything you're doing, uh, even in set design, if we know what the set looks like, uh, something like the Little Mermaid is gonna have a lot of blues and greens with accents of orange and yellow and maybe even some pink in there just to make things pop and to make it look like an underwater cool environment. So here you see sweet. So if you were doing something like maybe, I don't know, Willy Wonka or something, you could use this color palette for the candy room where there's lots of greens and yellows and vibrant colors. And again, the palette can be adjusted to whatever you want. This is breezy and I'll kind of skip ahead here to energetic. Now, again, like I said, this color, uh, this book, I'm sorry, has lots of different things. Like here's folksy. If you like folk art, <laughs> this is a great palette uh, for folk art here. You can just pick any of these palettes and work with these. But like I said, this book has a ton of information. I read this book when I first bought it years ago, and I think I read it again later, but I really should read it again now as an older artist. I think I'd get a lot more out of it. And I'm guessing that uh, this author's other book, The Colorist, has even more information. But uh, you can see there's just tons of color science and color theory stuff in here. And it's just full of great information. But one thing that I really love is if you get to the back of the book, much like these emotional and uh, evocative uh, words like energetic, here we have color palette options based on specific colors. So here's red. And you can see these are just some of the, the palette options you can use just using the color red and in proportion with other colors. And it goes through with orange, yellow, green, and so forth like that. Anyway, so you can see that uh, this is a really valuable kind of a book and resource to have. And I encourage you if, you, if you go to libraries or anything like that, check it out and see if they have this book or see if they have something similar and just browse through it to get a better feel of how to pick your color palette before you start your picture and have an idea of what you're getting into before you start. It's always a great way to start a picture. Now, something else I want to show you, pull this over here. This is a page from a textbook that I used to teach at my, uh, the college I used to teach at. It was an interior design class, and this was from the color theory section. And 
What this talks about is this is a triadic color scheme. If you're familiar with the color wheel, uh, a triadic color scheme is basically the primaries, red, yellow, and blue, or the secondary colors, green, orange, and violet. Those are triadic schemes. It's three colors on the color wheel. And you can see here that the author of this book has chosen this as their color palette based on the triadic scheme and then applied it into a real world setting. And I really, really love that. And when I used to teach this class, I used to get very excited about this because I love seeing these applications in a practical sense. Now, if I pull this one over here, this is another page. These are complementary colors, which are colors across from each other on the color wheel, like green and red, orange and blue. And in this setting, you have this really beautiful, warm, vibrant room, orange and yellows and accents of green. And the colors were based on this complementary scheme. Now, if I flip this over here, this is another great one here. This is a uh, what's called an analogous color scheme. When you have colors that are along the same path on the color wheel, next to each other on the color wheel. So yellow, green, blue, and violet. You could have violet, red, orange, and yellow. Whoever designed this room really did a nice job keeping this all together. You can see the contrast colors of yellow and violet, again, across from each other from the color wheel, but analogous in this setting. You can see in this palette here, they're analogous. But the way that you have a yellow at the top and the violet at the bottom, and then accented with these greens and these turquoisey blue colors, really works well to get these little accent colors to pop right off this contrasting palette there. And lastly, I wanna show you this one, and this is a tetradic color scheme. And this is using four colors from the color wheel. A little bit more complex of an idea, but you can see it's just setting up a palette using these four colors, and you can mix and adjust your colors as you go. And this photograph here from the book is really great in showing you, again, primarily a red scheme with uh, the furniture's green, and you have this red furniture in the back, and they really work well together without being too loud or too vibrant. And then you have this uh, sort of bluish color, lavender color, and again, the yellow in the walls. I really love how the green through the window and the red roses really pop through and make this color scheme really come together and work nicely. So I just wanted to show you that real quick. Lastly, the last thing I wanna show you is this right here. This is one of many sketchbooks I have. This is a field artist sketchbook. It is a watercolor journal sketchbook. Uh, you may have seen other sketchbooks I use. I use the handbook journals, but this is the uh, field artist. It has this sort of faux leather finish, which is really nice and soft. Uh, it's got 200 pound or 200 GSM watercolor paper cold press. And what I use these for is I have a whole bunch of these on my bookshelf. Sometimes when I start painting, I don't have a lot of time and I just want to paint. I just want to have fun painting. So I pull out my watercolor set and I just start painting. And you can see here that I just paint colors on the page. It doesn't have to be anything too fancy. I just enjoy laying the colors down, putting different colors together. And I'll try to go through this quickly so I won't bore you to death. But uh, what this is good for for me is I get to test out the paints that I have. It allows me to just test out the paints and experience the colors that they, they bring and the vibrancy of these colors in options that I might not have tried before. So I just sit here and I play with the colors, I paint them down and I just have fun. You can see here, I did this one, not really thinking about it, putting this olivey green, maybe a hooker's green with this Prussian blue in here and just really enjoying the effects. Now, a moody piece like this, we've all seen the red and black color scheme, but together like this, it gives me an option that maybe I hadn't thought of before. And so as I go through this book, you can see there's all kinds of different options where I'm playing with colors and just seeing, hey, you know, what works, what doesn't work? Like this piece here didn't work for me. It's very muddy, but maybe that might be a look I'm going for if I were doing something dark in a cave or something like that. That might be a good color option. So this is a great reference, just like the other book, the, uh, the Book of Colors. These are a great option for me as a reference to review back to, to choose other color patterns. And I can also go back into a, a painting like this and I can take a micron pen and maybe draw a face here holding up a, a cell phone or something. Uh, there's a lot of options for these books and I love keeping these journals. Again, there's nothing in mind when I go into these. It's just when I have some free time and I want to paint. That's what I love these books for. But the end result is I get these color swatches that 
no one else can make but me. They are mine and, and they're mine alone. So I can refer back to these anytime I want and say, geez, you know, this really is a good color scheme. I like that. Maybe this purple didn't work, but the blue and the orange work together really well. Here I can splash on some colors that I know are going to work together. Green and yellow always work together. But over here, it's like these sort of faded, muted, kind of bluish, beigeish colors there. Not sure what that would be good for, but you never know. It could be good for something. And so, again, lots of options here. Here I have, uh, I must have been thinking about a classic master's palette of Prussian blue, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and then mixing some colors between them to get that kind of a palette. Here, another palette option I probably was playing with. And uh, again, all from the same color wheel, all just mixing different colors and coming up with swatches that I think were fun at the time and maybe later I can use as a reference. So again, this is a, a field artist sketchbook. This is a four by four. I picked up this one here. This is the five by five version. And uh, this one I haven't even started in yet. I've had these for months and I, I haven't even used this one yet. But what I also like about these is they have this uh, neat little panoramic panel that you can pull out in the back here. So these are great to use as well. And uh, for me, I use my Sakura Koi watercolor field kit a lot of the times because I can take it on the road with me. And uh, these are a great little, you know, pair of sketchbooks to take with me on the road. And uh, just, again, makes me happy to just be able to paint anytime, anywhere, and not really think about the painting, but have a reference book of swatches. Like I said, I've got probably about maybe six of these on my bookshelf. And I don't use them all the time, but when I'm in the mood, I'll pull one off and start looking at it and say, oh, I never used that color pattern before. I'm going to try that next time. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful for you in some way. And maybe just get you to think about your color palette when you're choosing a color palette. And when you start a painting, not just opening up your paint can or your paint tin like this one here. I'm going to just show you this real quick because there's just so many colors to choose from if you have a big set like this one. And where do you start? If you don't have a plan for your color palette, you're going to end up pulling colors off and have a rainbow of colors in a painting that really, really didn't need a rainbow of colors. So... Choosing that color palette can be a wise option for all of us when we start our paintings and before and just lay, laying it down. So again, whoop, here it is. Book of Colors. Here's the author here, Shigenobu Kobayashi. Check it out online if you're interested in it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're creating all the time and I hope you're creating some amazing stuff. I can't wait to see you again. Look for more content real soon and uh, hopefully I'll readjust to my new schedule and bring you more content on a regular basis. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Have a great day and God bless.